resources say Encom, Encom Logistics and Nilex Malaysia will be undergoing a restructuring exercise. Encom is the holding company of Encom Logistics and Nilex. People familiar with the plans say Encom wants to park the logistics assets under one roof, Nilex, which is involved in the distribution, trading and manufacturing of petrochemicals and industrial chemical products. This leaves Encom Logistics, which does tanking and logistics for the products, without a business. The plan is to acquire immigration technology company S5 Holdings and inject it into Encom Logistics. The sources declined to share the price of the deal. S5 is a private company which provides security technology, intellectual property, as well as the development and customization of solutions and systems, and consultancy and support in all related IT and security industries. Last month, MyEG Services said it was planning to acquire a 10% stake in S5 for 90 million ringgit. Pharma Niaga and Duo Pharma Biotech shares jumped in active trade today after the government announced that the two companies will be bottling the COVID-19 vaccine once it's developed. Pharma Niaga hit 2 ringgit and 92 cent earlier in the day. It closed 21% higher at 2 ringgit 72. Duo Pharma hit as high as 2 ringgit and 11 cent before ending the day at 1 ringgit 89 cent, still up 16%. Both were among the top 10 gainers on Bursa Malaysia. But an analyst from a local research house who covers both stocks says the rise is sentiment-driven. He says investors should remember that it is still unknown when a vaccine will be found and safely rolled out to the masses. It is also uncertain as to how much earnings these companies can make from the COVID-19 vaccine. As he points out, there are many moving parts, such as how expensive the vaccine will be, whether or not Malaysia has enough scale for the fill and finish process, and whether the Malaysian market is big enough or must these companies look to exporting the product in order to achieve scale in the longer run. This is why he believes the stock's rise is more of a knee-jerk reaction. The Tourism, Arts and Culture Ministry is expecting a 75% drop in tourist arrivals for 2020 from last year. This is given the gloomy sentiment on international travel as people remain wary due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Minister Dato Sri Nancy Shukri says as of June 2020, the amount of losses faced by the sector reached 44 billion ringgit, comprising 31 billion ringgit in losses from international tourists and 13 billion ringgit from domestic travellers. However, she says she does expect to see recovery starting to queue, adding that many hotels have resumed operations with occupation rates of between 75% and 100%. Based on data from the Malaysian Association of Hotels, Prime Minister Tan Sri Mohidin Yassin previously said the overall recovery of the tourism sector will take four years. In hindsight, Former 1MDB CEO Datuk Shahrul Azra Ibrahim Halmi concedes that then Goldman Sachs banker Tim Leisner and his team had misled the investment fund's board of directors with regard to the 10.64 billion ringgit acquisition of Tanjong Energy Holdings. Defence counsel Wan Aizuddin Wan Muhammad had referred Shahrul to the overpriced projections made by Leisner. Together with 1MDB legal officer Jasmine Liu and fugitive businessman Lotik Jo on the profits that would be made after 1MDB acquired the power assets. However, Shahrul maintained that he was not a party in those talks and as such was not involved in making the projections. He also denied one Aizuddin's accusation that he had colluded with Goldman to value Tan Sri Ananda Krishnan's power asset at a high price in return for kickbacks. He also defended his decision to engage with Goldman for the deal, claiming that the bank's works were exemplary. Goldman made hundreds of millions of ringgit through 1MDB's acquisition of Tanjong Energy. In 2018, Leisner pleaded guilty in the US to helping orchestrate the looting of 1MDB and is banned from working in the banking industry in the US and Singapore. Resorts World Sentosa, owned by Genting Singapore, 
has made a one-off cut in its workforce. This is part of its cost-cutting measures, including a reduction of up to 30% in salaries of management in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Resorts World Santosa encompasses a hotel, a casino and the Universal Studios theme park, among other attractions. It did not give the figure of staff affected. According to its statement, it is keeping most of its local staff with the aim of having a stronger Singaporean core forming three-quarters of the workforce. The resort operator is now conducting employability workshops and working to find new jobs for its retrenched employees. It says it has already identified and shortlisted at least two to three such opportunities for every affected local worker.